focus. 30, 20, retard. 10, 5, What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting video. We are finally talking Airbus thrust lever quadrants. Now for over the last year, year and a half or so, I have been searching to modify my home cockpit setup to give me the perfect balance between realism, immersion, and keeping the price below the cockpit, the home cockpit building setups. Now, there is like anything with flight simulation, you have entry level gear, then you have cockpit building level gear, which is at the high end of the tier. So if you're somebody like me that wants something that's more than entry level, but you don't want to spend $2,000 plus on equipment that's going to be used for a home building and you're just going to put it on your desk or whatnot, you need to find that middle ground. Guys, I am very happy to announce that the Throttle Tech Thrust Lever Quadrant, which we're going to talk about today, is going to absolutely crush that need and desire for your home cockpit setup. In this video, I'm going to be talking about and showing you the Throttle Tech Airbus Flight Box V3. This thing is an absolute beast of a thrust lever quadrant. Now I'm going to be overlaying some footage of me flying the Phoenix A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator throughout the course of this video. And I also want you to know that this flight box is compatible with X-Plane 11 and I can only imagine it's going to be compatible with X-Plane 12 as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of the features of this throttle box and why I think this is going to really change the game when it comes to your home flight simulator. And I want to save you, you know, you could go to the website and you can read all the bullet points I'm going to try to save you that information, do your research on the website for those bullet points and all the good information. I want to talk to you about my own personal experience with this, with this equipment and some other additional information that I have from Roberto, who is the owner over at Throttle Tech. So, so jumping right into it, guys, let's talk about my first impressions when I pulled it out of the box. When I started manipulating this piece of equipment, I immediately was brought back to the actual Airbus cockpit itself. So the paint that's used on here is the same exact paint that's used by Airbus and other airline panel manufacturers to coat their equipment there in the cockpit. So the paint and the texture that you feel on the uh, the blue and the, all, just the whole box itself is very, very good. It brings me right back, gets that immersion factor going from the get-go. Moving the thrust levers, that's kind of the biggest part of this, right? We're getting thrust levers. We have all these other features we're going to talk about, but let's talk about the actual thrust levers themselves. When I put my hands on these thrust levers and I actually felt that these are one-to-one -one full size, exactly what I use in the real airplane, I was immediately refreshed and excited to put a smile on my face. And I could not wait to get this thing fired up in the simulator. So I attached the handles on top and I got it set up and I did my first takeoff in the Phoenix. And I got to tell you, the, so the sounds that it makes when you put this thing into the detents is right there with the real airplane. It is a very distinct, very tactile clicking sound that you get in the real aircraft as well. And you get that here with this throttle box. So the detents are very metallic sounding and there is no mistaking which detent you are in. All right, so moving to the actual movement and travel of the thrust levers. Being able to move these thrust levers, the proper amount of range is just something that I have not experienced before on my home sim. You know, we use all these other throttles that come, whether it be the TCA Airbus pack or even the Honeycomb Bravo, which has the most amount of throw that I have used in, in recent history. But having the actual one-to-one -one relationship of where the thrust levers are and the thrust lever position is just going to completely completely change the game on how you fly the airplane, especially if you are like me and you want to hand fly. One of the biggest drawbacks to the early TCA Airbus throttle lever that came out was that the detents were equally spaced. I brought this up in one of my early review videos and I said, I mean, this is fine if you just want to use auto thrust every single time, but even taxing the airplane or if you wanted to turn the auto thrust off in flight, you almost could not hand fly the airplane without going in and out of the detents all the time because there was just simply not enough range of motion. 
the real Airbus thrust lever quadrant has a non-equal split of where the detents are. So from a zero or idle all the way up to the climb detent is the longest range of travel. That is correctly modeled here by Throttle Tech. Between climb and flex, while yes, there is a detent not that far after the climb detent, that is still an active thrust range and you can use thrust between the flex MCT detent and the climb detent and that is actually there in the thrust lever quadrant. Now between flex and toga there is no thrust lever selection or there is no thrust selection between that flex detent and the toga detent. It is simply two detents. One is MCT flex, the other one is take off and go around power. And that is also correctly modeled here by the throttle tech box. So having that full range of motion going from zero to toga is absolutely game changing. Now, when I look at the reverse set here, this is a very, very well done. This is just like the real aircraft. So you lift up on the thrust levers, you lift up on the reversers, which will basically unlock the thrust lever quadrant and allow you to slide into the idle reverse detent. From here, the thrust levers do sit in a detent at idle thrust, very commonly used for normal landing scenarios. There is an option for full reverse thrust, which is on the same axis, which is also correctly modeled here by Throttle Tech. You can bring it all the way down to the full detent. And then it's actually, I'm actually finding myself doing my real world technique of walking the thrust levers back up out of that reverse, full reverse into that reverse detent. Because when you do drop the thrust levers into that full reverse detent, it's sometimes it's not uh, the easiest to just pull them right back out into idle. You, you don't want to accidentally shove them forward too far forward. So what I do in the real world is I kind of walk each thrust lever up with my thumb and my pinky finger around the thrust levers. And I find myself doing that exact same technique here with the throttle tech throttle, which is just a sign to you, someone who has uh, maybe never flown the Airbus or used the Airbus thrust levers, that these are in fact the real deal and the the muscle memory that I have just automatically goes right back to being on the line flying the real aircraft when I'm using this on my home sim. So to me, having that immersion factor and that muscle memory be one to one is just awesome. Let's look at some of the other features here on the throttle box. Now on the V3 version that we're reviewing today, we have the trim wheel option. Now this comes with two trim wheels, one on the left and one on the right, just like the real airplane. However, these function just like a push button would. So essentially you push down and that will activate trim nose up or nose down, whichever way you move, whichever way you move them. And that uh, functions perfectly within the simulator. That's very similar to how the Honeycomb Bravo uses the trim wheel that you spin over here around and around. So that is the function. That is a function that comes with the big version here, the V3. Let's look at some of these other features here on the lower part of the thrust lever box. All right, so looking below the thrust levers, we've got our engine start switches. This functions just like it does in the real aircraft. This is your engine start selector. So you can move it to ignition start, normal, or crank mode, which will then just motor the engines and they won't actually start them. So that functions just like the real aircraft. It feels very good. It's a very firm switch. Uh, you're not going to mistake it. Now moving to the engine master switches here, we have engine one master and engine two master. Now these are all CNC machine parts. They feel very good. They're very sturdy. However, I will advise that they are not exactly how the real engine start switches work. In the real aircraft, you actually have to lift the switch and move it forward to get it across a gate there. Now, I haven't seen that modeled short of a, a home cockpit simulator quadrant. That's going to cost you a, a lot more money than this will. But this is a good alternative because they are very heavy when you actually move them. They're, they're pretty heavy. You're not going to accidentally bump them off or on but yes they do not lift up they do not have the lift gates like the real start switches do in the aircraft 
All right, continuing to move on the bottom of the panel here, let's look at the flap lever. Flap lever is very well done. It has a very obvious detents. You will no longer worry about which flap setting you are in. You have to lift the lever below the flap here to actually move it in its track position. The Airbus has four notches of flaps, zero, one, two, three, and full, and they work flawlessly when you get them loaded up into your flight simulator. Now, this is an axis, so maybe you want to calculate so if you maybe you want to fly an airplane that's not the Airbus and you want to just use it as a different axis, it is possible. Just remember, you do have those detents in there uh, for your flap settings. So what I do when I fly the PMDG, I actually set a curve so that when I go 0, 1, 2, 3, I'm basically getting a 5, 15, uh, 30, and full. So that's uh, that's good to have that there. And it also has the nice little, uh, I don't know what that, what that equipment is, but leather there in between the groove, just like the real airplane does. It looks really sharp and it functions just like the real airplane. Just next to that, this is a feature that comes with the full-size flight box V3. This is the rudder trim and reset function. This typically is not used all that much in normal scenarios. Now the rudder reset button, that is used after every engine start. After the second engine is started on your taxi out, we do a rudder trim a reset. That means the trim is set on the rudder before takeoff. However, the actual movement of the rudder trim here, this is used mostly during an engine out scenario. So if you're taking off, hit V1, engine fails, you're gonna have a yawing motion of the aircraft. So the first thing to do is get your foot on the rudder pedals, get the airplane flying straight down the center line, and then we trim. So it's very common for me, this is something that I do in the, in the real airplane as well, is when I'm doing takeoff, we set takeoff thrust, boom, boom, and then we go, all right, V1, I put my hand down here because now if something were to happen, the next thing I'm going to do is trim the aircraft to the engine that has failed. So if we get an engine to fail, airplane's going to yaw to the right. I immediately need to get a left pedal in there and I'm going to need some left trim on there to help trim out that uh, engine failure. So I've actually done a couple V1 cuts in the sim. I messed around with this in the TOLUS uh, in X-Plane 11 just to verify that it was working with X-Plane 11 and it, it flew flawlessly. And I will be using this piece of equipment for my real world recurrent training that'll be coming up here very soon. So this is a feature that comes exclusively with the Flightbox V3. I do like it a lot. Um, if you're going to fly a different aircraft, of course, you could just set this to be regular, whatever you want it to be. Um, it, it, it does function as a button, just like it does in real life. So you have right, left, and then a reset switch over here. All right, to the left of the uh, rudder trim, we now have uh, the ground spoilers and speed brake lever. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the uh, ground spoilers and speed brake lever. First and foremost, we have I have not seen a correctly simulated uh, speed brake lever when it comes to expen extending the speed brakes until now. So in the real aircraft, you have to push this down, which basically puts the, uh, the lever into a track, which will then allow you to extend the speed brakes. There is a, uh, a little soft detent here at the half position. Uh, this is critical, not really critical, but it's just there to guide you know where you are when you're extending the speed brakes. And also as a reminder, the 320 aircraft specifically when the autopilot is on, even if you were to go to full, you're only going to get half speed brake extension. So this just makes it easy when you're doing your, your hand flying, you're looking out the window, you're not looking down you just go ahead and put this into that soft detent you already know you're at a half point you don't need to uh, go any further when the uh, speed brake lever comes back to the retracted position it automatically springs up and then it will sit there for the duration of the flight now for arming the speed brake in the real aircraft this is actually a pull up to arm. Now, I haven't seen this. I did this on my Honeycomb Bravo mod. Um, it, had, it had a little pull up function. This one, unfortunately, does not. But now there are some things that are uh, taken into account to help keep the price down on the equipment here. And this is uh, one of them that Roberto explained to me that arming the speed brake with the up position and having to do this down uh, down movement here um, would just would drive the cost up even further. So the arming function functions as a push button. So if you want to arm the speed brakes, boom, push button arm and they're armed. Now they will also, if you extend the speed brakes, they're going to retract 
or they will disarm and then you can put them back up there and they will disarm or you can just hit the button again to disarm them. The push down actually feels very good and it feels very similar to the real airplane. Uh, it's pretty common, you know, gear up positive rate, boom, somebody comes down and smashes the, or the non-pilot flying will come down and smash that with their fist to disarm the speed brakes. So you can still do that same motion here. The only motion that you're missing is the uh, pull up function. But I gotta be honest with you, I thought that initially I was gonna miss the pull up function to arm. But I gotta say, having the actual push down to activate the speed brake is more important to me now and actually more, more satisfying for me now because now I feel like I really am extending the speed brakes instead of just having to come here and move this lever. Of course, if you were to swipe your hand down the console, you don't want to inadvertently activate the speed brakes, so you are protected there with that detent. So it's good to see that that's how this speed brake functions. It's very good. I... Uh, I think it's a it's pretty decent quality. The parts feel very good, and I'm very happy with it. And you also have the nice uh, the text there. I mean, just like the real airplane or the real font, everything. It just it feels just like the real airplane. All right, moving to the last bit here on the flight box of V3, we have the parking brake. Now, this is a feature that I did not realize I would fall so much in love with until I started messing around with it on the sim. So in the real airplane, to activate the parking brake, you have to pull up and then turn, and the, the lever will kind of sit back down about half position, and that is the on position. To turn off the parking brake or release the brakes, the same is true in reverse order. You have to lift up. You have to lift up on the parking brake and then bring it to the off position. This is a motion that captains, myself, just, I have, you get so accustomed to in the real world because Everything at the gate when you're going through your pre-start, your all the boarding process, everything is done. Okay, we're going to release the brakes. The brakes are probably released when you're sitting at the gate anyway because you're on chalk. When you set the brake after pushback, you are kind of at your ready state. The engines are starting up, the tug is disconnecting, and everything is, is still in the pre-go mode, if that makes sense. In real life, when I release the parking brake, I get a, okay, it's go time. It's brakes released, hand on the tiller, and we start taxiing away. The aircraft is moving under its own power for intention of flight. That means it's go time. And that feeling that I get in the real aircraft has come back to me now in the sim with this parking brake. This is something that I completely overlooked and not think would happen. But when I'm sitting there in my Phoenix and Microsoft and I have the brake set, I'm doing the, and the pushback is done, we're starting engine and I'm using the start switches like this and we're gonna arm the speed brakes, flaps are one or two, whatever it may be. And I'm sitting there and it goes, all right, well it's time to taxi out. I can come over here, I release my parking brake and I immediately get that immersion and tactile response that I feel that I feel every time in the real aircraft of it's go time. And it's just really cool to see that. I did not expect myself to fall in love with something as simple as a parking brake, but just know that it does function exactly like the real aircraft. This is, a, I think this might even be a metal or a, a very, very durable resin material. It feels very good in the hand. It fits your uh, index finger and ring and uh, middle finger very well. And it has a nice, uh, nice tension to it when you lift it to set the brake and release the brake. So. I fell in love with that feature and it's just uh, it's something that I did not expect to happen but it is there on the flight box v3 and I think you're gonna absolutely love it one other neat feature that I really enjoy about this quadrant and this is the same for the mini box as well is that the panels are internally backlit so the light goes within the panel just like the real aircraft it gives you that airbus console glow that is very unique to the airbus itself when you get the uh, thrust levers illuminated there you get your auto thrust range the reverse range and of course the flaps and all that stuff illuminate as well so it's a very subtle detail but it is a very realistic looking and if you like to sim at night it is absolutely a fantastic little feature to have
All right, guys, so where does that leave us? We've gone over most of the features here on this uh, Flight Box V3 from Throttle Tech. I wanted to just show you some B-roll footage here of size comparison. This is comparing the uh, V3 box to my Thrustmaster TCA Airbus throttle, and you can just see the sheer amount of size difference. It is no joke. It is definitely not an entry level uh, piece of equipment, and it is right up there with the best of them. So rounding this video out here, where does that leave us with price? So the throttle box V3, the full size uh, Mac Daddy that I've shown you here today, is going to come in at about 1200 US dollars. You may be like, oh my gosh, if you want, that's a lot more than I'm willing to spend right now. Do not click off this video just yet. Throttle Tech also creates the A320 mini box, which is virtually the same exact thing for half the price. However, you give up a few little features such as the functioning trim wheel, you give up the rudder trim reset and parking a brake. So what happens on the mini box, they basically just combine the flap lever and spoiler lever with engine start. They combine that all into one neat little package for 650 US dollars this in my opinion if you're looking for that next level uh, gear but you don't you're not a real world pilot and you're not ready to spend the full price for the v3 you definitely need to seriously consider this mini box because I can only tell you from what I've experienced with the uh, throttle box so far it is going to completely satisfy all of your Airbus simming needs and I have attached some additional reviews of the equipment in my uh, discord if you want to take a look at those full reviews there so there you have it folks you have a two fantastic options for your airbus home simming needs ranging from 650 dollars to 1200 us dollars well below the home cockpit build equipment though looking at that would be about about two thousand dollars if you want to find something with the same features as this at the size that it is this is pretty much that perfect middle ground that I have been searching for. I can't thank Roberto over at Throttle Tech enough for uh, sponsoring me with this piece of equipment here. You're going to see it on the channel now for uh, the foreseeable future, especially when we're flying our Airbuses around. I will be posting some more pictures and videos in my Discord if you guys want to come take a look at that as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, stay safe. Stay healthy. I'm V1. See ya!